Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be trying to fix a MacBook. So I am going to get started here fixing a MacBook and uh, you're going to watch me fix a MacBook because you probably have nothing better to do. So here we have an A1708 that has liquid damage that's not powering on. I'm going to attempt to fix this MacBook that's not powering on that has liquid damage because that's what I do. I fix liquid damage on MacBooks. That's my job. That is my purpose in life. That is why I am here. That is why God, if there is a God, put me on this earth. To service Apple products. Nothing more and nothing less. I'm going to make sure that my disk space doesn't run out again, as it always tends to do when I start a board repair without checking. Let's make sure. You know what drives me nuts? I've at this point had three Samsung SSDs die. The, uh, the, it was an um, Evo... NVMe drive, the two terabyte one. I've had three of those drives die. And I, and I paid the full price on Amazon for it at the time. I didn't buy it, I used a refurbished one. And when I went to RMA the last one, they said I couldn't because it was gray market, which means that Amazon is selling me gray market SSDs that don't have the proper warranty. Whereas the RAID 0 array, I have a RAID 0 array on this machine. It's three Micron SSDs I think I got on Black Friday. They were refurbished. They're two terabytes each. I got each of these SSDs two terabytes each at the time for about $150 or $160 on sale. There's three Micron two terabyte SSDs in RAID 0 right now. And I have been writing to those SSDs every single day for the past two years. And those SSDs are working just fine. I write to them. I'm like, X264, QP equals 8, preset equals very fast. These are large recordings, and they don't die. But that Samsung Evo NVMe drive, I've killed three of them using it as an operating system disk. I barely even write to it. Maybe I, like, you know, I'll, I'll copy stuff that I'm just, if I'm doing a compilation video that I'm editing or something like that. But, like, 99% of my work doesn't happen on it, and it keeps dying. But these three Micron SSDs that I've used in RAID 0 and written like terabytes to every single day for years are just uh, still working like a champ. And they're in RAID 0. I'm waiting for it to die. Like I, at any point now, I'm waiting for it to die. I literally, I use this as a scratch drive for large video files. That's it. That's it. Scratch drive for large video files that are being handled very, 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 very temperamentally, temporarily. So, yeah, it just, uh, it just says something to me. I am I'm starting to become a Micron fanboy, and I am not exactly happy with the idea that I can buy an S an a Samsung SSD, Amazon Prime, for over $300. I think it was more than that at the time. It's probably like closer to four or 500 and get told, sorry, that's not covered under warranty when it fails repeatedly within less than two years because it's gray market. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Mr. Bezos. All right. The first thing that I like to do with any of these machines is unplug the battery and then see how much amperage it's taking. So let's see how much amperage it's taking and go from there. Now when I plug this machine in, at 5 volts, it's taking 20 milliamps. See that? 20 milliamps. I'm not turning on. So we're not getting the uh, charger activated. This is a USB-C charger. The USB-C charger is supposed to be putting out 20 volts of this machine. It can do 5 volts. It can do 9 volts. It can do 20 volts. It can charge your GoPro, your phone, or your computer. It is a multi-purpose charger. It's a multi-purpose port, kind of like a cloaca. If you don't know what a cloaca is, then you should... Here, listen to some Zafrank videos where he goes over marine biology. Zafrank is one of my favorite marine biologists. True facts about the sea pig. True facts about the frog. The mantis shrimp. He dresses like a clown and is also a, has a psychopathic killing instinct, not unlike the modern clown. And I love Zafrank. That stuff's hysterical. I enjoyed it. The mantis shrimp scares the piss out of me. Little s it's, it's a little fishy with a psychopathic killing instinct. Someone says the world is falling apart and watching MacBook repairs is my only peace in this world. 
you know, it doesn't matter to me so much to focus on the things that I don't have as much control over, don't as much say over, or if I open my mouth, am just going to wind up making things worse for myself and everybody else. I'm Here's the thing. Like, when the world is in times of strife like that, uh, I would like to focus on the thing. Re- recognizing that regardless of what sort of restructuring there will be or what will change, that there will be a world out there. There will be a world to go back to. People will have to return to reality at some point in time. And when they do, I would like my position in that reality to be one that was better tomorrow than it was yesterday. So I just keep focusing on doing my thing, doing my thing, doing my thing. And I suggest that all of you do the same. Because you need to realize that regardless of how crazy the world is, at the end of the day, life goes on. Tell me what you see on this MacBook motherboard. What do you see when you look at this MacBook motherboard? Can you tell me what you see? Everybody in the chat, tell me what you see, all right? Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Here. I'll even fix the white balance and the exposure for you so it doesn't look like total crap. Ah, there we go. All right, what do you all see? Between the left CD3215 and the right CD3215, it looks Mars red. No, that's not the board that looks like California. That was just me forgetting to set the white balance. Perhaps someone can set the white balance on California and Oregon at some point. You see green. Yes, indeed you do. And you see a damaged capacitor. Yes, but what do you see that's even more important than a damaged capacitor? You should see something down here. What do you see between here and here? Something missing, maybe? Have you ever purposely smoked a board by sending too much voltage? Figure a donor board. Absolutely, and it's great fun. 20 volts is fun to send through a board that you has been bothering you for a long time once it belongs to you. So what do you see here? So I got my board view open at this point. Now, one of the things you may notice is that this resistor is missing. This resistor is where PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to power the CD3215. Yes, PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is a power rail that is required for the CD3215 to function. In a normal old MacBook, you need PP3V42 underscore G3 hot to be present in order for the SMC to turn on and also for the one wire circuit to turn on that turns on the charger. And on this machine, you need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot to be present in order for the CD3215 to be present to work and turn on. Now, what do these CD3215 chips do? That's an excellent question that you have there. The CD3215s are going to be responsible for speaking with the with the charger. And that's going to happen right here. So over here, you have a data line. This is this little USB-C XA CC1 con. That's going to go here. That's going to go here. This little transistor goes through the transistor. And it goes to my CD3215. The CD3215 is then going to tell the charger, I am not a cell phone. I am not a GoPro. I am not a camera. I'm a MacBook! And I demand 20 volts. You will give it to me, or else. And that's what is not happening here, because it's not getting the power to do so. Now, do remember, this is a MacBook, so it would not be designed in a manner that makes sense. If any one of the two ports are not functioning, the entire machine doesn't turn on. Not the machine is not going to you know, allow that port to work properly. Nothing works properly, because it's a MacBook. This is a machine that only has two ports, but on the machines with four ports, if even one of these things stops working, None of the ports on the computer will work at all. You have four charge ports. My computer has one. My one charge port is stronger than all four of yours because I have a ThinkPad. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to replace that zero ohm resistor right there, and it's going to be fixed, and it's going to work again. And even if it didn't work because this CD3215 chip was not good, you could buy a new one at store.rossmangroup.com a website that I neglected for two months because I was losing my mind and unfortunately was not managing that site properly. I apologize. Uh, but However, we have a website again that you can actually check out on because I noticed that you weren't actually able to check out for a month because the person that I had do my Magento 1 to 2 upgrade took about 9,000 bucks and legitimately just kind of never fucking did the job. Asshole. 
Anyway, so I've hired someone else to do it who also did a, a shit job. And now I have a third person who is finally finishing it, who gave, to put some uh, temporary fixes into this theme. And we're going to be putting to a proper theme on it soon. But yeah, if you needed to buy a CD3215, you can buy it on store.rossmangroup.com. And if you're not able to check out because you use Firefox, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll work. Give me a week. Give me a week. I choose all the right. Co I choose all the best contractors. I really do. Ah, uh, okay. I choose all the best contractors. Anyway, uh, first thing I'm going to do over here is use a mild amount of flux. I'm going to reflow that chip. I'm going to give it a nice little reflow. And while I'm reflowing it, I'm going to remove the capacitor that looks nasty. After I remove the capacitor that looks nasty, I will scrape away at the point with the resistor. Replace the cap and put a new resistor there so that chip can get powered. Then we'll have a happy little machine. Your misfortune helps others not make the same mistakes. Still super valuable. Yes, please learn from my mistake. Do not hire David Brown at neo1seo.com because if you do, he will do he will do the work for years and years and years and do it and the one time you just say you know what you've done good work for years and years you finished this part of the project I will pay you for the second part of the project before it is done he will take that nine thousand dollars and you will not hear from him for a year and a half <laughs> and then he won't refund you any of the money uh, that is the way that works do anyway. So, we, uh, that is my fault. I accept it as my fault. My fault was that I actually trusted someone to be a decent human being. Never do that. It's like, how long have I lived in New York for? Now, granted, this is a mistake I made in, like, 2018. But it's, uh, like, this is a mistake I made a long time ago. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know what I did. But yeah, yeah. So, like if you screw someone over that you just kind of met off the street, that's one thing, you know? If you like, if, if you screw someone over that you just kind of met on the street, like you get one over on them, but like when you screw people over that you work with before, that you try, it, it's different, because like it's easier to screw those people over, you know? Like, it's not cool at that point. Anyway. I do my scrapey, 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 scrapey. So see here, you don't want to solder on top of corrosion. You need to scrape away the corrosion. How does one schedule a meeting with Lewis, one-to-one? -one? I don't do one-to-one -one meetings, because if you couldn't tell from my many videos, I really am not a people person, and I don't get along with people. And people that think they would get along with me uh, don't get a, like, they, there's nothing really worse than that, that moment when someone realizes that you're not who they think you are. Like when I meet someone and they think that I think a certain way or they think I agree with them on something and then they realize I don't and then they realize, oh my God, I have built up this idea of you in my head and that's not who you are at all. And then they act very betrayed and it's a very awkward thing. It's very strange, it's very awkward and it has brought me to a point where I really, really just don't want to meet random people that know me from the internet. So that doesn't exist. I wasn't a really a people person anyway, you know? Like I do my work, I go home, I listen to my Alice in Chains, I read my Bloomberg, I go to sleep. I'm a simple guy. I really... I could go without the meeting people. I have, but sometimes I'll use Erica as a shield. People, uh, I, I used to do that with Jessa too when people would want to meet me. Like I would use her as a human shield. Jessa used to call herself the Munchkin. She used to say like, "I'm, I'm the Munchkin." Uh, 
I don't get it. Jessa is such a people person. She gets along with people, people... Everybody loves Jessa. And then when it comes to the internet, it's like, we only want to meet Louis. It's like, no, meet Jessa. She actually wants to meet you. She likes meeting people. Meet Jessa. She loves people. She's the biggest people person you'll ever meet. She, she, went, she was going to go deadlifting with one of the opposition lobbyists. They were sharing stories about the calluses on their hands and their PRs and all that shit. Like, she, she really likes meeting people. She's a people person. You don't want to meet Lewis. Who you really want to meet is Jessa. Because Jessa likes people. You don't want to meet me. Okay. Ruby Lewis is probably hiding from Lewis for the same reasons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ruby Lewis was my celebrity crush from Cirque du Soleil. That was my celebrity crush a long time ago. I give Ruby Lewis the benefit of never asking to actually meet her. Like if I saw her walking on the street, I think the nicest thing that I could possibly do is pretend that I didn't see her and pretend she didn't exist so that she wouldn't have to have one of the many strange and awkward experiences that I've had to have. It's like a professional courtesy thing, you know? Professional courtesy. Lots want to meet you're an interesting inspiration of the business people. I don't know, why am I an inspiration? I don't get it. I don't want... Uh... I'm just a dude who at any given point in time is like one step away from totally failing at life. But every now and then manages to like, right before I get to being a failure at life, like slightly grab a tiny bit of success before I fall into the pit. Uh, anyway, okay, we got the next capacitor to go here. Da, 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 da. Now you see how there's that red stuff coming out uh, from the chip as I'm heating it? That is not white balance, that is actual corrosion underneath the chip. So I'm going to turn off down the HDR a little bit, it's a little too high. Turn up the exposure to a vice television contract level. And I'm just going to allow that flux to give it a little bit more of a reflow there. Get all that corrosion GTFO. I'm not shy about it. Now I'll let it cool off for a moment before I try turning it on and we'll see what happens with it. Now we're going to cool it utilizing rapid cool technology. Don't go doomer on us, we're rooting for you. I thank you. I don't know. Get inspired by someone that doesn't choose someone to redo their Magento website that like takes $9,000 and doesn't do anything. You know what you should, you know who you should choose as your inspiration? If you want to be inspired by someone as a business owner, be inspired by someone that doesn't pay until the job is done. When they're 10 effing years into their business because they want to be nice to someone that had done decent work in the past. Be inspired by someone that makes good life decisions. Chris Long is here. How's it going? I've been watching your video about Apple Winds. I have this exact conversation about the phone side of repair for Apple. I fear the future without Apple getting sued. Well, yeah, even if none of this stuff winds up being fixable into the future, in some way, shape, or form, I could in some level accept that. What I'm not willing to accept at all, and what I will, you know, I will make sure that I go down fighting, is the idea that if it's not fixable, it's because we suck. Because it's, it's one thing if it's not fixable because my hand is not steady enough. It's one thing if it's not fixable because my brain is not sharp enough. It's one thing if it's not fixable because I have not organized my business well enough. I have not demonstrated good leadership. We don't have enough attention to detail. We don't have the expertise. But no, it's, 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 it's none of those things. When it's not fixable because someone has done something on purpose to be an ass, 
I'll go down fighting to make sure that the, you know the, the, the PR loss is uh, you know hits where it belongs. So let's see what happens over here. We're going to plug this in and see what goes on. I'm going to plug it in. Now remember, beforehand we were getting 24 milliamps and not turning on, and right now we're getting 40, 87, 84 milliamps. Ooh, come on, give me 20, 20 volts. Yes, yes, 20 volts. That was weird though. Because it usually goes to 200 milliamps, and then it goes to 20 volts. So this one went to 85 milliamps and then 20 volts. But you know what? A win's a win. I will take the win where it is. I'm going to see if I get myself a question mark folder. Hope I do. First thing I do before I do that, though, just make sure I clean the desk again. I did clean it before I started. There's can never such thing as being too clean. On this channel, we teach you how to clean the boards. In the Staples video, I taught you how to clean your asshole. And in this video, we teach you how to clean the desk. Kill the coronavirus from it. Die, corona. Die. Die. Filthy coronavirus. Die. Also, any little... Gets rid of any little 0201 resistors and things that may have fallen off or stuff that's going to scratch the machine. I do try to not scratch my customer computers, and they tend to appreciate it when they get their b computer back with just as many scratches as it was on when... It got here. So we're going to plug this in, see if it works, see how it's going. And if it works well, we will see. What if you're breeding a corona strain that is resistant to the spray? Are you breeding corona? That sounds like the kind of thing someone would say if they were breeding corona. Are you breeding corona, my friend? Because if you are, I am going to ban you from my chat. Because I do not... I am not for the spread of corona on my channel. Okay, we're going to plug this in out here. Open you up. See if we get a question mark. All I'm asking for is a question mark. Not a Q. Question mark. No Q. Come on. Come on. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Thank you, BYXX. Uh, question mark. Yes! The question mark folder of success! Come on, Sony. Focus. You're ruining my moment. There we go. Focus. Peace. That question mark folder. So, hopefully, you learned something from this video. Remember? The same way PP3v42 underscore G3 hot is important on the older MacBooks, PP3v3 underscore G3 hot is important as the first power rail on the newer MacBooks. Thank you very much, BYXX. I highly appreciate that. I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.